It's Monday, the 18th of March, 2024, and welcome to the first ever edition of Nat's News. I will be analysing the papers and the patterns. I will be going through the headlines. I will just generally be giving a take on uh, all of the stories and my views and opinions on them. And uh, that will be social media, the alternative media, the mainstream media. And uh, where can I start? Of course, there's only one thing. It's been discussed, discussed across everything. <gasps> where is Kate? Oh, I actually couldn't give a toss. But everybody else seems to really care. Um, and uh, yeah, mainstream media, let's go straight to the Daily Fail. This is what they're saying. Kate Middleton's surprise farm shop trip piles more pressure on from the palace to update the nation on her recovery because AIDS silence is just fueling more conspiracy theories, warns the experts. It's kind of saying it all there, you know? They're, they're, I feel like they're trying to discredit the conspiracy theorists because if you go on social media, all the alternative media is talking about is Kate and this royal announcement and what they could be covering up. And you know what will probably happen? She'll come out after Easter and she'll be there. And uh, they could they could do that now if they wanted. If they wanted to quash these rumours, they could just put out a video uh, of her, a very low quality you know, one uh, video from her phone. If they wanted to do that, they could. Uh, they they could do anything. She could just go for a walk. But they're enjoying all of this attention because the royals have become very, very unpopular and it's been a way, you know, the Harry and Meghan drama hasn't been pulling in any real viewers or or making people read the stories. But this one, the Where's Kate saga, everybody is talking about it and it's not going away anytime soon. And people, obviously, some of them are saying she's dead or, you know, Prince Charles could be abdicated or maybe Charles is dead. But what what do they get out of it? You know, if there's a conspiracy theory, you know, there's always a reason behind it. If she was really dead, does it not make them look really stupid if in a couple of months they've got a release that she's died when people have been talking about it? The biggest likelihood is she had an operation or she didn't, or maybe she's just spending some time with her family and she's sat at home you know, stuffing her face full of macaroni, cheese and pizza and chocolate, all that comfort food, because normally the poor woman uh, looks skeletal thin and has to go on a diet. And uh, maybe she's just making the most of it. And she'll come out at Easter exactly uh, like they said she would. And there'll be absolutely nothing behind the story. But every single person has been speaking about it nonstop for absolute weeks. So in answer to everybody's question, where's Kate? Just like the pantomime. It's behind you. No, it isn't. There she is. Yeah, it's theatre. Um, so if I were you, I wouldn't give it any of your attention. Don't uh, bother trying to post about it or speculate or make accusations. That's just my opinion anyway, because I couldn't give a shit. Uh, but I've just done the same thing and given it the time. So there you go. Uh, irony, hypocrisy, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but we shall move on. We shall move on from Kate. Uh, going to the Daily Fail as well. Uh, the next kind of story down was cockolded husband 48, who put up with his wife's multiple affairs finally snapped and punched a rugby playing new lover. That really gives you the standard here of uh, reporting in the UK. Uh, there's another story as well. Banksy confirms he is behind the tree mural, which appeared overnight on the south side of a building in North London. Well, I actually quite like it, but uh, the uh, kind of big uh, attention with Banksy, I don't really get that either. But um, it is actually worth a look. I want to see your opinions. Do you like it? I think it's uh, quite clever the way he's made this tree. Uh, but the other one uh, that was worth covering here, uh, and this was in the Daily Fail as well, this was about Idris Elba. Now, if you remember about Idris Elba, he uh, was one of the first celebrities, wasn't he, to get uh, uh, COVID. He was very, very ill. Uh, I think his girlfriend was. I remember the video coming out, you know, it convinced people uh, that, that COVID uh, was very, very serious. Well, he's got big dreams, has our Idris. 
He wants to build a futuristic eco city in Sierra Leone and reveals reasons behind him, his innovative plans on the island off the coast of Africa. The budget has not yet been specified, but the scheme will likely cost billions of dollars. Uh, so yeah, a smart city is uh, what Idris Elba is looking for now. So it seems a bit odd, doesn't he? He was uh, the, one of the first big famous celebrities to get COVID and now one of the first big celebrities pushing the idea of a smart eco city. We shall of course carry on following this story, uh, but it does seem rather unusual. Uh, and it seems an apt time as well to give my kind of dickhead of the day award or big dickhead of the weekend, but uh, I'm gonna give my dickhead of the day award to two people. Uh, and this is over social media over the weekend. Uh, so if anybody remembers good old Anna Breeze, uh, well, she was given an interview over the weekend. It's been all over my timeline. And for this comment alone, uh, she calls herself now... Like Jill Dando with a Twitter account. Jill Dando with a Twitter account. Uh, so, yeah, um, if she hadn't already lost the plot, it looks like she's she's finally lost all sanity. If anyone can give any explanation for this or just whether she's completely crazy, yes, the, uh, the, the narcissist herself, uh, God Complex maybe, believes now she's Jill Dando with a Twitter account. The other dickhead, of course, has got to go to Matthew Stadlin. Now, uh, he's been every over everybody's Twitter. Um, and believe me, uh, I, I actually don't uh, think he believes himself. I think this is another guy that just likes the attention. He's just a little bit of a troll. He's almost like a parody. Uh, always woke, always controversial, always perpetually offended. Well, he's been mugged uh, and he had to make it very clear that it was a white person uh, that stole his phone. Uh, and he did say a couple of years ago that he... Uh, People thought too much of him and he was too appreciated to ever have a crime or, or be mugged. Uh, but of course, uh, he still was a victim over the weekend. Perpetual victim is Matthew Stadlin. And um, uh, on top of that, he creamed his pants. He did when Elon Musk replied to him with a laughy face. So do I think he was even mugged? Probably not. Do I think uh, that he was very upset about Elon Musk uh, retweeting him or do I think he probably got off on it? Absolutely do I. So yeah, dickhead of the day's award, Anna Breeze, Matthew Stadlin, it absolutely has to be. And the main other stories covering, if we move to uh, the BBC now, let's have a look. Uh, they are actually covering something a little bit more serious than some of the other papers, yet Produ uh, their predicted Putin's landslide. Uh, it was easy what come next. They say uh, the West condemns Russia's pseudo election as Putin clan claims a landslide win. Uh, also in the Telegraph, uh, they've been covering uh, the Putin election win. Uh, Cameron is saying Putin's election reveal result reveals the depths of Russia's repression. Putin strolls to victory, but his opponents humiliate and outfox him. I saw in Sky News, uh, they were saying or uh, that he was uh, or comparing him to Stalin. And then they said, victorious Putin warns voter, warns voter crimes will be punished as he is branded a tyrant. Um, there seems to be a lot going through the UK mainstream media, uh, not very happy about Putin's victory, trying to claim it's fixed, obviously still claiming that he's a villain, almost like Austin Power style. I think he's going to come out and be like, Mwah, ah, ah, ah. you know, um, but to me, um, the heat is very popular in in Russia does Putin, whatever anybody may think of him. So uh, I'm not so sure uh, the polls were rigged. I haven't done a lot of reading on it, but just giving you kind of the up-to-date mainstream media take there uh, does seem a lot to be a lot of propaganda, obviously following on uh, from what we already know about Russia and what's been said over the last couple of years. Uh, what else have we got in the news? Well. GB News are in the news. 
uh, this time uh, they've uh, uh, this is the, they've been in trouble with Ofcom yet again. It's not the first time. Uh, we found five GB news programs featuring politicians acting as news presenters in breach of due impartiality rules. Now this was on Ofcom's official. Uh, Twitter account, uh, read our full statement here. It says, but all five programs in question contain a mix of news and current affairs content. We found that host politicians acted as news raisers, news interviews or news reporters in sequences which clearly constitutes news, including reporting breaking news events without exceptional justification. News was therefore not presented with due impartiality. Now, my views on this one. Well, if you're going to use a politician uh, to, to bring the news to you and they're obviously from a certain party, of course it can't be impartial. Well, as long as you tell them that, that's not a problem. But now, it, there does seem to be an issue with them using GB News to clamp down possibly on censorship and uh, silence in other people. They don't seem uh, to be having the same rules with other stations. Now, I'm no fan of GB News myself, uh, but uh, they, it's almost like you wonder if it was created in some way uh, for them to be uh, the, the, the the station, if you like, that they can take in consistently uh, can throw the rule book at them uh, and that will then be silencing other people. Uh, so yeah, uh, GB News in trouble with Ofcom yet again. Uh, one of the final ones that I thought I, I'd have a look at uh, this actually came up in Sky and we've seen over months now there's been a theme of shoplifting. Uh, shoplifting, um, you know, that they're trying to claim in all of the mainstream me media it's a massive problem. I do believe they're pushing that forward because they want more self-checkout, they want more cameras. Uh, uh, so this is another shoplifting uh, story um, and they say about Primark, they're going to use giant sold stickers on bags as it clamps down on shoplifting. Uh, so Primark has begun sealing its carrier bag with large sold stickers in a big to clamp down on it so uh, it's going to stop people um, obviously getting a Primark bag as they go through the store and putting things in it so you've got the security guards uh, uh, at the shop entrance so they'll be checking to see in Primark if these big stickers have been put on it well I can understand it from their point of view there probably is a lot of stealing but uh, it adds to this uh, fear uh, campaign as well that we've seen over months and months um, loads of uh, videos loads of stories all about shoplifting so yeah so maybe that will happen in other stores as well uh, but if you go out of the store you'll need a big sticker uh, put on your bag to say that you uh, have brought uh, stuff from there and uh, the last one that I will uh, bring up uh, there's two stories again um, I do I do like a good laugh in the Daily Fail uh, but it was worth not noting that there's been so much in all the papers at the moment um, about uh, the skinny pill, Ozempic, I think it's called. Nearly every other day you see a celebrity talking about it. Uh, Sharon Osbourne uh, supposedly took it. She's been on Celebrity Big Brother, I think. Uh, we've got another one today. Scientists are trialing drug-free skinny pill that tricks the body into thinking it's full, just like Ozempic. Uh, so there's lots of uh, pushing of the idea of of, uh, you can get fit or healthy or thin uh, by taking a pill. Uh, personally, I like the idea of just looking after yourself, uh, eating less, uh, doing more, but uh, the mainstream media seem to have different ideas about it. Um, and top of that, uh, seems a good one uh, to end it on. Uh, this one. Um, and I'm not just trying to get a rise out of you. Ha ha ha. Uh, erection pills such as Viagra have been linked to over 200 deaths in Britain. So be careful, lads, what you're taking out there. Uh, jokes aside, though, there does seem to be lots and lots of articles recently now talking about side effects. You didn't used to hear a lot about side effects of medication. Uh, they do seem to be normalizing it, desensitizing it to the idea that drugs do have side effects. So make of that 
what you will. Uh, it's time to go now. Uh, that's my brief uh, update of uh, the weekend's news, patterns, what's going on. And of course, keep asking yourself, if you so wish, where's Kate? Or you could just ignore it like I do and say, never mind. So it's time for me to go. Bye-bye.